TechSan would like to welcome you to the webinar, Strickland Tate Centers by Dr. Rod Strickland. Dr. Strickland has an exceptional practice in Savannah, Georgia, and has been teaching the facial center technique to dentists all over the country for about the past three years. TechSan is lucky to be a part of these courses, and we've seen some amazing practice transformations. Strickland Facial Centers will not only help you grow your practice, but will help you provide an exceptional service to your patients. Welcome, Dr. Strickland. Thank you, Jennifer, and uh, thank you all who are watching this for watching it. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Uh, obviously, you're, we're here talking about the Strickland Facelift Denture, and this is a procedure that uh, I've been doing, as Jennifer said, uh, I've been teaching for three years and been doing for several years uh, more than that. And really, uh, people have to ask, why dentures? You know, why have I gotten into dentures? Uh, I remember back in 1997 uh, deciding that I was going to quit making dentures, and I swore that I would never make another denture for the rest of my life. And now here it is in 2013, and I teach di making dentures. Um, well, so why dentures? And really, it was the economy. Uh, if you remember, uh, as I'm sure most of you do, back in 2007 or so when the economy crashed, um, we began in my practice uh, looking for alternate revenue streams, alternate profit centers, if you will, and in bringing uh, income into the practice. Uh, just doing the same old drill, fill, and bill type of a, of a practice we didn't feel would um, be well supported in this uh, in this recession. So uh, we began looking at uh, the profit centers, individual profit centers within dentistry. And you can look at all of these. You can all think of them as different revenue streams, uh, the types of dentistry that we do. So we looked at each one of these areas and, and, and considered them, uh, was it something that we would want to bring into the practice? Was there something new that we were not doing? Uh, for instance, one possibility was orthodontics. Uh, we didn't choose to bring that into the practice because we felt there were, was a lot of competition in that. So we, we started looking at all these profit centers uh, in a certain way. And uh, the way we did that is we, we you know, think about a profit center. If you were opening one up from scratch, what would you want? Well, you would want to pick a product that a lot of people need. You would want to pick a product that they want. It would need to be something that was affordable. You wouldn't want to have a whole lot of competition, so there would be not that many places already doing it, and of course, something with high profit margins. So we looked at all those individual dental procedures, and we looked at them with this viewpoint, and dentures became an obvious choice. You know, dentures are the perfect dental procedure. It's what we call the perfect storm. And why do I say that? Well, it's the right procedure. If you think about dentures. They're easy. There's no shots. There's no drilling. There's no margins. There's no cements, no bonding, no bleeding. There's no recurrent decay. And they can be very, very predictable when they're done right. And it's the right market. There's a lot of people that need dentures. Those people that need dentures typically have more money because they're, they're an older population, older demographic. They're very unhappy for the most part. There's a huge cosmetic need that can be fulfilled. There's a huge functional need that can be fulfilled. And so therefore, it's a wide open market. So that's why we call it the perfect storm or the perfect dental procedure. It's the right mix between a great procedure and a great market opportunity. So we chose dentures to be that uh, one of those profit centers or one of those new procedures that we brought into the practice. Another beautiful thing about dentures is it drives two other profit centers, extractions and dental implants. So because denture patients are missing teeth or feel like they're going to be missing teeth in the near future, then this brings in two great additional profit centers that we weren't already doing. So people say, well, why improve? Well, why improve is quite simple. I remember in 97 why I quit doing dentures. And that was because I, I, I wasn't getting predictable results. I wasn't getting the type of results that I wanted to get. And I was, I was, I was you know, upset with the results. I was upset. My patients were upset with the results. And so it was just easier to stop doing them. So I wanted to build a better mousetrap. Those unpredictable results led to complaining patients. 
and those complaining patients made me an unhappy dentist. So let's look at the procedure. Let's look at dentures. And you know, I had the opportunity when we brought dentures into the practice. We, you know, anyone has a choice. You can compete against price, or you could compete against quality. Well, I chose quality. Uh, there are, I think, the market is flooded with inexpensive denture clinics, and so, but there is very little competition with high-end dentures. You know, people like this walk in. Um, we look at the golden proportion of the face. If you look at the image on the left-hand side of your screen, uh, that face is showing what we call golden proportion. And we go into a lot of detail in this in the, in the class itself. If I make this transparent and I slide it over top of the face, you can begin looking at the um, uh, sunken in look that this person still has. If I bring the mouse on here, in golden proportion, her face her lips should be down here, and her chin should be down here. So if you look at where her, lie, her eyes line up, her nose lines up, but look at where her lips and her chin are. So what that tells me is that she's sunken in. She doesn't have enough vertical. Her teeth are not sized properly to fill out the lower third of her face. Let's take a look when we make a new set of dentures, what this looks like. Same lady. Just a new set of dentures, same golden proportion overlay, and now you can see her lips and her chin line up exactly. That's what we decided to compete against was quality. What is the denture look? What is it that people don't like about dentures? Again, you have to realize the lower third of the face, the distance from the nose to the chin is all defined. It gets its shape by the teeth and the bone that are underneath. When someone loses their teeth and loses their bone, the face will sink in. And if their dentures are not rebuilt to the proper proportions, then that face is going to appear sunken in. And we'll get a shortened vertical dimension, we'll get thin lips, we'll get a weak chin. Now look at the difference in her lips from before to after. She has not had any lip enhancements, she has not had any any fillers, anything like that. The only difference is the dentures. So it makes a dramatic difference. I'm going to give you a little quick, quick overview of this technique. Obviously, it's a two-day course. I can't explain it in a 30-minute webinar, but um, I will give you a quick overview here. So this is a graphic representation of an old set of upper and lower dentures. The first thing we do is we're going to do a liner, and that's this gray material here. We're going to do a liner with a material called sapphire. And when we do this liner, we're going to be tensing, that's transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation. We're going to be tensing the facial muscles. And that's going to be causing those muscles to flex and relax, flex and relax. And we're going to be tensing the patient while this sapphire material is hardening. That creates some awesome border molding. So we're going to get, in essence, a functional, muscularly functional impression all within just a few minutes as opposed to a few weeks. The next thing we're going to do after we do those, the, the reline and border molding, we're going to take the old denture in the mouth and we're going to build up some composite resin off the uh, incisal edges of teeth number eight and nine. We're going to use our mind's eye and we're going to visualize this in the patient's mouth. We're going to decide how long the, incent the central incisor should be. Once we do that, we're going to shoot a bite registration. We're going to again use the TENS machine to relax those facial muscles and, and to help us to determine what their ideal vertical dimension should be. So we're going to squirt bite registration in, have the patient bite together into the bite registration material and capture the new vertical, the new bite relationship. We're then going to send these dentures into the laboratory, into our lab in the office, and we're going to make a duplication cocoon out of them. It's a little technique I developed using laboratory putty. And we're going to make a, a duplication cocoon of the upper and lower dentures at this point. We're going to take what's called a leveling index so we can 
uh, translate to the laboratory what the uh, proper level of the maxillary arch is. We're going to send everything to the laboratory, where the laboratory is then going to, based on the position of tooth number eight and nine, where we added the composite resin, they're going to set the upper teeth in wax to the ideal curve of Spee, ideal curve of Wilson, everything based upon nothing more than that incisal edge position that we dictated in the old original denture. Once they set the upper teeth in wax, they're then going to set the lower teeth in wax, and they're going to send that back for a wax try-in. So this will be the new wax try-in that comes in on the second visit. We will try the teeth in. If everything looks great, we take final impressions, send it to the lab, and on the third visit, they get their new teeth. But this webinar is not really talking about um, the, the procedure itself. Uh, this webinar, I want you to understand what the opportunity is, and the opportunity of bringing in a new profit center, which you may or may not already have in your practice. At delivery, um, there's one thing that is critical to understand about any occlusion, and that is the timing of the occlusion. You know, articulating paper only gives you the final marking points of the final occlusion doesn't really show you with any uh, reproducibility uh, the timing of the occlusion. It's very easy to understand this with dentures. So I've made this little graphic here. And, and normally when a, a, a set of teeth come together, we're going to have this person bite together, and you're going to get your contact points occur all at the same time. Now this is ideal. Every tooth contacts at once. Now with a denture, I want you to look up here. Once they bite together, the denture is going to seat just a tiny little bit onto the gums. So that's ideal. You get all four of these contact points hitting at once, the denture seats, and that's perfect occlusion. Now that rarely happens from the very beginning. What normally happens is you're going to get one side hitting in first. Okay, and this is where you cannot determine this with articulating paper alone. So in this situation, take a look at this. We're going to get contact points hitting over on this side. Now what's going to happen over here? Well, you know exactly what's going to happen. This denture is going to torque up. This side is going to hit. Then this side is going to come down. And your articulating paper is going to show the same four marks, but this contact is a premature contact. Now this is also true with teeth because they have a periodontal ligament. So just like this denture moves slightly, the teeth move slightly. And there's only one device that I'm aware of that can show you this, and that's the, uh, the T-Scan uh, from TechScan. And this little device has a sensor and a computer readout. You place the sensor in the mouth, you have the patient bite together, and it creates this really neat movie here. And not only does it tell you where the high pressure points are, but it also gives you the timing of the occlusion because this creates a little movie in, uh, in fractions of a second. You can go through each step, each step by step by step, and you can see what tooth hits first, second, third, fourth, and so on, and you can make your adjustments accordingly. I have found that this tool is invaluable for me with dentures. So um, if you've never heard of a tech scan, you should go online and try that out. Let's talk a little bit more about the marketing opportunity. Um, we've talked about the technique. We've talked about why we brought it in. And this plays a big component. If you remember back to those, uh, if I was opening a profit center from scratch, you know, I didn't want to have a whole lot of competition. Well, you know, what is the current denture marketing? For us in our market, before we began advertising for um, high-end dentures, the only marketing that we would ever see was plain Jane. You know, it was nothing fancy about it. It was just an ad that said, hey, we do dentures. Or they were ads that were recommending uh, or, or selling cheap dentures, economy dentures. Or it was same-day service. So any of the marketing that we ever saw was all just plain Jane, you know, sort of like the, uh, the family dentist ad that doesn't really say anything in particular. It just says they're a family dentist. Uh, or they were, they were promoting cheap dentures or one-day dentures, same-day service dentures. Ads like this, you know, 
inexpensive, affordable, uh, you know, nothing fancy about any of these ads. This is what your competition is in most markets. This type of advertising drives the public's perception of what dentures are. So if, if, if in any given market, if the only advertising that you ever see about dentures is plain, cheap, and quick, then the public's perception is not going to be very high about dentures. You know, I love this slide right here. It says the world's highest standard of living, this is, there's no way like the American way, but there's the, the food line, people standing in line for food. So it is public perception here is not what reality is. I think the public's perception of, of dentures are that, well, if you have dentures, they're going to look like dentures. If I have dentures, I'm going to look like I have dentures. I'm always going to have to live with this look. What I have is as good as it gets. See, I think that's what the public's perception is. They don't know that there's beautiful dentures, that dentures can look as real and as beautiful as natural teeth. Well, that is until we began doing marketing. And this is a sample. I'm going to show you some samples of advertisements that, uh, that we have done in the past. Um, this is a beautiful ad. Uh, focuses on the Strickland facelift denture procedure. It shows some dramatic before and after photos. Now, this is uh, ready-made ads that I have created. And I'm going to show you a series of, of some ads here, some of which I, I use uh, only in my practice, but some of which I've made available for for dentists um, who've taken the course, that they can get their marketing kick started. See, what I've tried to do when I created this, this, uh, this seminar, um, I not only wanted to teach people the, uh, the, the technique, and not only teaching it in a, in a very simple cookbook method. Uh, I've had people who've taken many other types of denture courses, and they tell me that mine is the most straightforward, and it is the simplest to understand. I give everything in a cookbook format. But not only do I want to teach you a great technique in a way that you can understand it, but I want to provide to you marketing material so that you can be successful. And it was this actually came as a result of many requests of, of the alumni who took my, took my course who came back and said, hey, can you tell me who did your marketing or I'd like to do marketing like that. And they would only find that uh, it's very expensive to do and, and, and I, I dawned on me one day, maybe I should do it. And I could provide that as an added service uh, for a fee, of course, but much, much, much less expensive than what someone would go out and do on their own. So anyway, this is an example of a print ad. We also have billboard ads. You can see this one. Uh, there's a dentist in Kansas uh, that uh, is Mary, in Mary, Marysville, Kansas. Uh, this is what his ad looks like. Uh, I also have a national website. It's called faceliftdentures.com, and it's a place where someone can go and they can click on this button. These are for patients. They get all kinds of information about facelift dentures. They can click on this. When they click on it, uh, a map pops up, and they can double click onto this map, and they can zoom in to anywhere in the country uh, where they want, and they can see uh, the, the certified uh, Strickland facelift denture dentists around them. And it'll give them their address and phone number and everything. So again, I'm trying to create a system where the docs who take my course will be successful and get an awesome return on their investment for their CE dollar. Now this is a TV commercial. This is uh, one of my TV commercials that we do just in Savannah. But I'll, I'll show it to you now. Tell me about facelift dentures. There's basically three types of dentures. There are economy dentures, there are traditional dentures, and there are what we do, which are the facelift dentures. Facelift dentures provide the underlying facial support, which will plump your lips out, it's going to lessen wrinkles, it's going to help fill the face out. They're going to chew better, and they're going to fit better than all the other dentures. Our patients absolutely love them, and that's truly exceptional. Okay, so that was one of the ads that I used to show in my course, and people would see that and they say, wow, that's a great ad, and one thing led to another, and I decided to produce some ads uh, that would be available to the graduates. So uh, this next ad is one of those ads. Right now there's a series of three ads. I'm going to show you two of the three. 
The first one is designed as an introduction to the market uh, of what facelift dentures are. So, so this is going to show people what is the Strickland facelift denture. Introducing the new Strickland Facelift Dentures. Your front teeth support your lips. Your back teeth support your face. If your teeth aren't designed for facial fullness, the result is that sunken indenture look. The Facelift Denture changes all that. You can expect fuller lips, less wrinkles, a tighter neck, and a stronger chin, restoring your smile and reversing the aging process. Dentures don't have to look like dentures anymore. Change your life today. Call Dr. J. Andrew Carletti or visit us online. Okay, so that is the what we call the Generation 1 commercial, and that is an explanatory commercial designed to educate the public that there is a difference in a plain old ordinary denture and a Strickland facelift denture, and that you can get a fuller face. So, so that first one is all designed about educating the public. This Generation 2 ad is a testimonial. This is about, uh, and, and the same with the Generation 3 ad, they're both testimonials. This is a male and the Generation 3 is a female. Um, so I'll show this one, and it, it's going to uh, give you the power of how facelift dentures can change someone's life. For 20 years, I never smiled. If I smiled, you didn't see anything. You saw teeth on either side, and it was not attractive. I had tremendous wrinkles running down the side of my face, wrinkles around my lips. I looked old. I felt old. I knew I had to do something. I went to my dentist. He said, we have this new thing that's called a facelift denture. It was just so much more than I could have hoped for. When I got my dentures in and they put that mirror in front of my face, and I'm sorry, but I cried like a baby because it just made such a dramatic change. And from that day forward, I stood up straighter. I walked taller. I was proud to be seen in public again. So that is a very powerful testimonial ad um, that's designed to, to work in complement with the, uh, the Generation One ad. Basically, our goal, my goal nowadays, is to get patients with complex needs. Facelift dentures, the advertising will bring in patients uh, who need new dentures, uh, who currently have old, ugly dentures, and uh, those types of people will respond immediately to the ad. It's very, very common. Uh, in fact, almost always when people start running these ads, they get in the first month, they'll get a couple of cases, um, and it's what I call the low-hanging fruit. There are a lot of people out there, a lot of patients out there who, who hate their look, and they will respond right away. But after a year or two of consistent advertising, something strange happened, and I began getting patients responding to the facelift denture ads that had teeth, but had a lot of highly complex dental needs. So. The Strickland facelift denture, it not only brings in denture patients who you're replacing their denture, but it began bringing in a lot of complex cases. In many cases, the patients were able to save their teeth. They just needed a lot of work, but also in many cases, they, they weren't, and, and uh, there's uh, the dentures and the, uh, the surgery and the extractions and the implants and just a whole lot of other work. So the goal here is to get patients with a complex need. And as I say, Strickland Face of Denture advertising does that. Your marketing creates a desire, a desire for people like this, people who are coming in that have been holding onto their teeth for too many years. Uh, but because of the public perception, because of their perception of what dentures were, they would rather hold on to their raggedy old teeth than they would to get a denture. That is, until they understood that there was a difference. The technique that I teach will give you the confidence that you can change and give these two, give any two people, uh, just a beautiful smile just like this. By the way, both of these cases, these after photos, are the 24-hour photos. These are their immediate dentures. And uh, so you think they're happy. They walked in looking like they did on the right just a couple of visits later, they walked out 
looking like they do here on the left. So to me, it's been a great uh, procedure to have in the practice. Um, it's so rewarding. Patients uh, absolutely love it. You, too many people use the term changing lives, that, that, that cosmetic dentistry changes people's lives. But I can tell you, when you can take someone who is uh, highly infected uh, with ugly teeth and, and periodontal disease and cavities, and you can get rid of those bad teeth, get rid of that infection, and give them a beautiful smile, you are truly changing their life, not only from, a, from an emotional or, or a physical standpoint, but from a health standpoint as well. People routinely say they feel better, they have more energy, they look better. So it's psychological, it's physical, and it's emotional, the changes that we make in people's lives. Profitability, let's speak a second on that. Um, I, I say in my lectures that I want to try and make dentures a sexy dental procedure again. And what I mean by that is, uh, smile, you know, compare it to smile makeovers, porcelain veneers. For anyone who was a dentist, back when cosmetic dentistry really started becoming a, a, a I don't know what you would want to call it, a, a, not necessarily a fad, but uh, cosmetic dentistry became popular, um, it was really cool to learn how to do porcelain veneers, let's say. And veneers became the quote-unquote sexy dental procedure that all dentists wanted to do. Uh, it was fun. It was exciting. The public didn't really know about smile makeovers, and so you would get a, a true, dramatic, life-changing event with people when you gave them smile makeovers, say, 20 years ago. Uh, now everyone knows about smile makeovers. It's not nearly as dramatic. You know, Porcelain veneer smile makeovers are very profitable, so it was a sexy procedure from a standpoint of it was really cool to do, it was exciting, it was fun, the patients loved it, and it was highly profitable. Well, listen, I'm here to tell you that facelift dentures can do the same thing. Look at this slide here. Uh, this is a, a, a comparison of a 10-unit porcelain veneer case to a 10-unit Strickland facelift denture case. And basically, your fees may be different than my fees, uh, but Bottom line is here, we're going to factor in lab fees. We're going to look at the amount of chair time it takes. And we're going to look down here. We're after lab fees are factored in, um, a, a 10 unit veneer case is bringing in a little over $4,000 per hour of doctor time. That is the doctor's time in the chair while they're working. Facelift dentures are more profitable. So whether your fees are as high as mine or would they ever be this high or maybe they're higher than mine, the point is, is that it's very similar in profitability to a smile makeover. So they have become a sexy dental procedure for me. This is my final slide here. I just want to uh, tell you in 2013, the remaining courses that we have are uh, June, August, and November. You can see here on the slide. Um, I do teach it in two locations. One's in Savannah, Georgia, and one is on Hilton Head, South Carolina. Uh, both of them are awesome locations. If you like history, uh, Savannah's the place to go. If you like the beach and you want the uh, uh, spa and resort life, uh, then Hilton Head would be the place to go. If you happen to be looking at this after 2013, uh, you can go to my seminar website down here on the bottom left. That's uh, faceliftdentureseminars.com. And uh, that's always updated with the most current course dates. So uh, I'd like to thank TechScan for sponsoring this webinar and putting this on for me. And I'd like to thank you all for, for listening to me. I've tried to stay on time in about 30 minutes. I appreciate your time. And, and if you have any questions whatsoever, go to the website. My contact email is there, and you can send me an email. So thank you very much, and have a great day. On behalf of TechScan, I'd like to thank Dr. Rob Strickland for presenting today on the case of Venture Technique. I would encourage everybody to head to his website, or if you have any questions, uh, feel free to email us as well at marketing at techscan.com. Thanks so much, and have a great day.